Reading 89. From the Psychological Commentaries on the Teachings of Gurdjieff and Ospinsky by Dr. Maurice Nicole. Volume 1. Birdlip, October 10, 1943. The Digestion of Impressions. Last time, after the answers to the first three questions had been read out, something was said about the talk at Birdlip on the previous Saturday in which I spoke about the digestion of impressions. It might be just as well to give a further talk on this very important subject. We have often spoken about the transformation of impressions. You all know the work continually points out how we receive incoming impressions. The work teaches that impressions are the highest food that we take in and therefore the most important. It has often been said that everything you see, everything you hear, the people you know, the books you read, enter as impressions. Other people are impressions to you. You touch them, you see them, you hear them, and so on. Now, the first place of work on oneself is designated as the place of the first conscious shock. The meaning of the first conscious shock, which is sometimes called in a general way, self-remembering, is to transform impressions. You can accept some impressions and reject others just as ordinary food coming into the body as hydrogen 768 is either accepted or rejected by the stomach. So, first of all, there is the acceptance or rejection of impressions, and then comes the digestion of impressions, which is exactly comparable with the digestion of food, in which you extract, as it were, certain parts and excrete or get rid of other parts. To make a right stomach in the top compartment of the three-story house is the object of this work. The work can form, when it is sufficiently understood, a stomach that rejects or accepts, that is, a stomach that digests. The transformation of impressions is exactly comparable with the transformation of food in the stomach. Food is taken in and digested. Digested. Example, it is transformed into finer and finer matters. You remember that 768 passes to 384, and then to 192, and so on. Impressions enter the human machine in the top floor as 48, and can become transformed into 24 and 12. But the work teaches that ordinarily this does not happen except in very small quantities. When you begin to become active in your life, when you begin to take charge, excuse me, when you begin to take things often from the work point of view and not from a natural or mechanical point of view, you begin to digest impressions. This idea of transformation or digestion of impressions is met with in the Gospels, as you all already know. We have to take everything in a new way. Ordinary people will take things in an ordinary way, but in the work we must take ordinary things in quite a new way. This was called in the Gospels, Mitvoya. As you know, many people have written about the meaning of this strange word, which is so wrongly translated as repentance. De Quincey suggested transformation of the mind. I suppose you have all realized that you take in impressions through the present form of your minds. You see things, as it were, through your mental apparatus. Take a very simple, mentally uneducated person who sees an elephant. She will probably say, tut tut. Perhaps you see what I mean. You all have mental attitudes, mental apparatus for reception. A set of ideas that you take as completely voracious as completely right, true, and so on. When you become more educated, your mind changes to a small extent, so it becomes transformed slightly. What you previously thought was quite impossible or wrong, you now see is not as you thought. Every one of you is limited by his or her thinking. Of course, you do not see this yet. For some reason or other, we all think we already have all points of view, all possible thoughts. This is utterly wrong. Each one of you is limited completely and totally by the small range of thinking 
that you have acquired by your mental prejudices, attitudes, and so on. Life appears as it does to you because of your mental level. You cannot take things in a new way unless the way you think changes, unless your mental level is changed. As I said, it is extraordinary that we all think we are capable of taking in any kind of experience or of understanding anything just as we are. Do you see that we have not the apparatus? We have not the power of reception to understand beyond our limited mental outlook and limited mental functions. Now, metavoya, so wrongly translated as repentance, means to get beyond one's present mind, not to pass out of one's mind, but to get beyond one's present mind, to transform one's whole way of thinking about oneself, about other people, and so on. A new mind is a new body. Excuse me. A new mind in a new body means the development of a completely different understanding, which leads to the formation of a second body in one. The work teaches you many quite new ideas about the meaning of life in general and about your own lives. Unless these ideas are taken in and thought about individually, your minds will remain exactly the same kind of dung heaps as they are at present. You have often heard the expression that this work is to make us think and think in a new way. Now, take this phrase and apply it to every place in the Gospels where the word repent is used. Let us suppose that it was already translated as think in a new way. Then perhaps you will see how the work is designed to change the entire furniture of the mind and rearrange the whole mental being. Now, with regard to the digestion of impressions, digestion of impressions depends on a stomach, and the stomach, in this case, is the work. The work is to give you a mental stomach to digest impressions with. You can only digest your day by having something to digest it with, something that has been established in you by the assimilation and consent and valuation of the work. When you refer things to the work, you will find at once something that will help you to arrange your daily impressions rightly. You will learn to take things in a light, an easy way, which ordinary people would take very negatively and heavily. And you will also learn to take things in a serious way that ordinary people take very lightly. Let us take an example. Someone speaks to you in a way that you do not like. You feel all the mechanical reactions arising in you. You feel how you dislike this person and so on. Now, suppose that you identify with all these typical mechanical reactions, which means consenting to the feeling of I and going into these mechanical reactions automatically aroused in you so that you say, I can't stand this or I can't bear this or I dislike this so much, this kind of person who looks like this behaves like this, and so on. Well, of course, if this happens, you are not transforming impressions. You are not working on yourself at all. Let us take another example. A person you do not like mechanically happens to say something to you of which you see the truth. You may perhaps despise this person, mechanically speaking, from a life point of view. Yet this person has said something that rather penetrates. Now, you may think it ridiculous that a person of this kind can say anything of the slightest value to you, possibly because you think you are far better. Yet, at the same time, here is something that you must accept and digest. What you must excrete are your feelings of despising and so on. You will usually find that your best advisors, your best sources of knowledge, are people whom you would normally completely disregard. I always think it is very interesting to reflect a great deal on the fact that Christ was born in a manger, a place of least importance from the life point of view. Since I am talking about this subject, I would like to mention something that was said long ago, a phrase that has not been used for a long time. Try to see what you are resting on, all of you. 
Try to see the basis of your self-satisfaction. You will understand that unless this basis is completely broken up, there can be no change of being. Now you can see clearly from these examples that I have given that if impressions come in and ring up the usual place, there can be no digestion of impressions at all. You are not then attempting to transform impressions. You may talk a great deal about the first conscious shock, but you are not practicing it because the first conscious shock is to transform impressions. Now, suppose you are sufficiently interested and sufficiently conscious to notice how these impressions fall on you mechanically, and suppose that you have sufficient valuation of the work to wish to transform these impressions, which means not letting them simply fall on their usual place, exciting your usual dislikes and hatreds. In order to do this, you must have some power of digesting impressions. And this is where the work comes in. You know that the work says that people are mechanical. Now suppose you apply a work idea of this kind at the moment when you notice that someone is making a customary negative impression on you. If you understand something of what it means when it is said in the work that people are mechanical, then you will not accept the impression so easily. You will realize that it is not the person's fault. You will realize that the person always does this, always says this, because he is a machine. But of course, you all know already that you will never really see in the right way the mechanicalness of other people unless you see your own mechanicalness and how you are constantly doing the same thing. Perhaps you will see what I mean by these illustrations of transforming impressions. If impressions, excuse me, if you have these work thoughts in connection with this person, the impression will fall in a quite new place in you. It will be digested. But first of all, you must have a new kind of thinking, some degree of mitvoya, because you can transform or digest these impressions. If you can do this, you will find yourself entering on a very strange path that you cannot understand for a long time. You may tend to go back to your old ways of thinking because you cannot understand it, but if you do it, it will be a great mistake. To think in a new way about other people means that you yourself are beginning to change, and when you are beginning to change, you will feel that you are losing sight of yourself. But if you always remain inside of yourself, that is, if you always remain as you were, you cannot change. To change, you must lose your ordinary feelings of identity. For instance, if I wish to change, I cannot remain Dr. Nicole, or even Nicole. Change of being, change of oneself, means that you become quite different. Now, if you apply the work as a transforming agent to your life, to yourself, and to people around you, and the impressions they make on you, you begin to change. The work is designed to make you change. Taking things in a new way, namely from the work teaching, is bound to make your whole relationship to other people change. But this will not happen unless you digest impressions by means of the alchemy of the work. Now I will speak of the digestion of impressions at the end of the day. If we could work more consciously, we would digest impressions at the moment of taking them in. But since we have not this power, since we are not conscious enough yet, we can digest impressions taken in during the day, at night time, or even the next day. That is, we can rearrange them in our minds in terms of what the work teaches as good and evil. You remember that it is said in the New Testament that we should not let the sun, sun go down on our wrath. It is important <clears throat> how we go to sleep, and it is equally important how we get up. Past moments of sleep, past moments of identifying with wrong eyes in ourselves, can be to a certain extent canceled by consciously going over the whole situation in our minds afterwards. 
you must never think that you cannot work on a thing in your past. Never think that you cannot alter it. You can alter the present. You can alter the past. And you can alter the future. Now, I will tell you one of the most important ideas of this work, teaching. This life on earth cannot be understood save in terms of another life, of another world. All that this work teaches is about how to educate ourselves in terms of another life, of another level of being, of another level of humanity called conscious humanity. This is one of the greatest transforming ideas contained in the work. You know we must begin to imitate a higher level of humanity. We are all in the basement, but we might get up to the drawing room. All the work teaching about non-identifying, about negative emotions, about self-remembering, and all the rest of it is about going upstairs. Of course, if you take this life and all that happens in it as the only thing and have no idea that there is anything else, you will never be able to transform impressions. You will always remain under A influences. <laughs>